today, pet expert, Laura Nativo, and she is back to show us how to turn your living room into a dog agility course. Wow, okay. What, what is going on? Is there a leak or something? BJ <laughs> Thomas, oh my gosh. <laughs> what are you doing up there? Well, it's just raindrops keep falling on your head, Marie. Oh. Oh, jeez. Well, obviously, I'm never going to stop the rain by complaining. Oh. <laughs> hey, BJ, you need to get down from there. Okay, I will, but come on, let's have some fun. Today, let me tell you, my first guest is a five-time Grammy winner who has sold, check this out, over 70 million albums. I know. <laughs> Billboard magazine lists him as one of the top 50 most played artists of the past 50 years. Isn't that incredible? Now, you know him from hits like, hey, won't you play another Somebody's Done Somebody Wrong song, uh, Hooked on a Feeling, and of course, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. And he recently released a new CD, The Living Room Sessions. Uh, it is fantastic. You have to get it. Please welcome B.J. Thomas! Yeah. B.J.! Oh, man. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Oh, my gosh. It's so good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Oh, isn't, isn't he so handsome, always? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. My gosh, we go way back Talk together. Talk about beautiful. I mean, you're, no. you're so lovely, just like you always, always have been all your uh, life. You're a southern gentleman, you're darling. Well. <laughs> we go, gosh, let me think, the last, was it a Children's Miracle Network thing I saw you? Yeah, or? I think I probably uh, saw you there, but I, the first time I, I met you, we did a show together in St. Louis. Oh, that's right. Oh, at the, the yeah. was it the Fox or the whatever? The Fox Theater. Fox right. Theater. Yeah, Fox that's Theater. Right. Look at you. Look <laughs> at you. Boy, that, that was the style, wasn't it? I guess Man, it's so. all coming you know, somebody, back. Somebody gave me, that, gave me that jacket on the road, and I wore it, wore it out. <laughs> <laughs> you wore it out. My gosh, you had so many hits. Well, In incredible. Now, what you did, you did the most unique thing with your new CD. You Tell them what you did. You took well, the hits. Well, I've got a new CD uh, called The Living Room Sessions, and uh, it's a kind yeah. of a reinterpretation of my hit records. It was kind of, uh, kind of risky uh, to do it in that, you know, m most people have, have heard them before or maybe even have the have vinyl on it but uh, it's been a long time and <laughs> those it was, were very large CDs and it, yeah and you know the, the record company wanted us to recut all the uh, all our hits and uh, uh, you know we've always resisted doing that because right. you never really can catch that original magic Sam. you know or whatever you were doing and so someone suggested uh, doing it un unplugged, and so that that gave us a good enough reason to do it so yeah well most people don't have it. as many hits as you had well, this is only half, half or a third of them, so we <laughs> So I wasn't so much, you know, I wasn't so much a, an album guy, which I, I wish I had been, but I was a singles yeah. guy. This was back in the time when, you know, you put the singles out, you know, did that top 40 thing, and uh, it, it was nice. It was yeah, fun. well, you, it was fun. You, but you had the most amazing voice, totally the most amazing well, voice. Thank you. Still you. Do. Thank now, you did something also kind of interesting. You turned some of them into duets. Yeah, I've Who got are some, some of the people? I can't believe I didn't bring that up myself. No. But I, yeah, well, I did uh, uh, Just Can't Help Believing with Vince Gill mm -hmm. and uh, Wrong Song with the, with your friend Richard Marks mm -hmm. and A Raindrops Keep Falling with Lyle Lovett. Lyle. And, and there's, a, there's a new singer from the, from this area, from California, uh, Sarah Nimitz, who uh, we did a duet with. And who else? And uh, Keb Moe. You're, you're a, ro a road warrior. Well, we, I'm we kind of... We grew up on the road. Yeah, I kind of... Uh, you know that's where I find my you know uh, find my my payoffs now. I mean after, you know after you've been around so long that you you no longer fit the radio demographics anymore. Well you got to keep you got to keep doing your thing, and I, I I still have the the burning desire. So so I only do 50 60 shows a year, but I'm not like you. I mean you're really working, but uh, that's but a I, lot. But that's I still, still that's a lot. And, uh, hey, I remember when you worked what. I mean, you were doing like 200, 250 dates a year. Oh, I'd go out sometimes 300, 300 days in yeah. a year. 
And I, me- I remember one That's time. That's when we were working together. We make about yeah, 300 days I a went year. Out, I, I came home from one of my long trips, and, and I, my first daughter was about, about two years old, uh, Jerry Page. And when I came in the door, she said, hi, B.J. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, like, it hurt heard of me. Might you know? be time to stay home for a week. No. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you, how are you and your wife Gloria doing? Oh, we're great. Uh, you know, I married a, uh, an exceptional woman. Uh, You've been married how long? Well, I've been married 45 years this fall. 45 years, isn't that awesome? 45 years, and the, you know, I, that, I stay on the road so we can get along. <laughs> no, but she's a great girl, and she's always traveled with me. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we, at some point, uh, you know, it got to be a little much for me, and I was, I was having some, some personal problems, so we retired, kind of thought we were going to quit, and we went back to Texas, and uh, we adopted a little child, and, and, uh, and then we had a, Sweet. and then uh, I was recording in Nashville, that's how I retired, but I was recording in Nashville, and uh, she was flying to California to pick up Nora, little baby Nora. This and is your, your, the oldest daughter you adopted? This is the middle, the, the adopted girl. Adopted. She was flying oh, to Calif- out here to get her, and uh, she was kind of sick that morning. And I said, you know, like she had the flu, and said, well, you go to the doctor when you get home. So when she got home, she went to the doctor, and she was pregnant. So, so uh, that's how we had the two. The two. Isn't it funny, though? That's, that's a yeah. common thing. You that's... try and try. Oh, look. Oh. So cute! Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Yeah, like having twins. I was shooting actually, and that became my album cover. I was shooting, and, uh, doing an album cover shoot, and they they came in and they wouldn't get out of the way, so I had to take some pictures with them so they'd get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And now you know here you here you had uh, two daughters, and and then you had another daughter, right? Uh, then we then she was pregnant with our third daughter, Erin, uh, and uh, that of course the adopted girl. Is but Nora. then check this out. Now you're a grandpa. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I love? Oh, you guys, seriously, tell tell them the name of your grandson. Well, yeah, and I, I had three granddaughters, and they're the greatest kids in the world. Uh, but and I had three. We had the three daughters, but right. now we had the first boy How cute. in a long time. And, and his name is uh, Billy Joe Thomas Moore. It, it was a family tradition of my son-in-law's to name the first son after the maternal grandfather. If that's not too confusing. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I got a little boy. There he is. Uh, I got a little boy, and, and his name is Billy Joe Thomas and something. Yeah, it's uh, so Moore. cute. <laughs> You're so, so funny. So he's like, you know, he's. He's like the Messiah around our house. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so one of the ways that I, I, I've always related is you've, you've done so many different genres of, of singing. I, yeah. I do that as well. I, yes. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. But you started R&B, right? Uh, well, I was uh, R&B guys were my heroes when I started. And actually, my first hit, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, mm-hmm. was an R&B record. In its in its time, mm-hmm. uh, and they they booked me out with James Brown. I went out with James Brown and yeah, toured, awesome. toured with James Brown, and he, you know, of course, he was like a hey! he was like a god to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he and he treated us great, treated me great. Of course, I did record with Ray Charles and yeah. a lot of people, but then I eventually ended up ended up with uh, Dick Clark. And but and when when you went out with them, they didn't know you were white. No, no, they, no, they didn't. They did it. No. We came, you know, we came walking, uh, came out on the stage when, uh, that first night, and uh, the people thought, you know, we looked like we worked at the grocery store or something, you know. <laughs> and, um, but you your know. your voice is so soulful. But, well, James, yeah. James actually came, took the mic from me, and went on stage and said, "Hey, look, you know, I, I know this guy's different from my show, but he said I met I met him at the sound check, and, and he said I, I want you to give him a chance, you know. So so they did, and well, I, I went out and started singing, and they. They love me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awesome? You know, um, you you also sounded a little bit like Elvis. Me, did you ever? You worked with Elvis, right? Yeah, I, was, yeah. Uh, I worked with Elvis, and Elvis uh, recorded all his comeback hits uh, in the American Studio in Memphis, where I That's made right. "Hooked on a Feeling" and uh, "Just Can't Help Believing" and and the "Wrong Song" and all that stuff. And, Wrong uh, song. What a great song. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was lucky. I worked with Chips Moment and the American Studio Group, and they oh were my gosh. they were like Hall of Famers, and yep. they did all the comeback Elvis stuff. And of course, this was back in a time when. You know, we weren't competing with each other. We all loved each other. You know, and we uh, 
we knew that if we could get Elvis to come in and, and record with us, that he could have hits again, you know. Well, and, you, you know, I so did. did. I uh, went and did Paper Roses there. I worked with a Jordanaires. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, which they did all the backgrounds for Elvis and yeah, stuff and like that, Yeah, and when they too. come in, it's like, you know, you just know how he felt for a, for a moment, you know, and they they started singing those Jordanaires. They were wonderful. But he, he came in and cut, and I made a lot of hit records there. And, uh, you know, I've been very, very lucky. Yeah, well, you're very, very talented, too, let me tell you. Also, I don't know if a lot of people know, I mean, I do, because we worked in Vegas uh, during that time, but when Elvis passed away, oh. uh, you were the one that stepped in. Well, I did, uh, I, he had uh, a couple of shows left, and I, uh, my, I did, did a couple of shows, rema his remaining shows, and it was very, it was very, very difficult, difficult thing, and very sad, <laughs> sad to do, and everybody was so sad, you know, you couldn't. But, you know, hey, we did it, and how I was very you, proud of it. And how did you do that? Because, I mean, how do you step in for, the, for Elvis? I mean, did you do any of his songs? Or? Well, I knew, I, knew I, couldn't, I couldn't do any of his songs. And, you know, it's, it's a funny thing I've learned, especially over the years. People who are Elvis fans, they don't like people who, the, the imitators. Now, now, the imitators, they do have an audience, but the true Elvis fan, they, they don't like to see him imitated because mm -hmm. most of the time the imitators are imitating the wrong guy anyway. Right. Uh, no one can be that beautiful and that talented and that handsome that, and that, that nice. Uh, there was only one guy that could be him and he's already been and gone. But uh, I didn't do any of his songs because uh, I, I just don't think I could, I could go there. But uh, we did get through the shows and just packed out but just totally silent, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? One of the things... One of the things that I talk about on this show is, you know, people can go through bad stuff, but how they get through it. I know Elvis struggled with prescription drugs, and, and you've been through your own uh, well, was, challenges as well. That was one of the reasons that we did uh, uh, back off uh, back in the day was I did have a lot of personal problems uh, with alcohol and, and uh, drugs and things, and, you know, I'm one of the lucky guys that got through it. Uh, I want to say that those of us around... Uh, Elvis, we knew something was going on, but we didn't, we had no idea that he wasn't having the greatest time. Uh, right. He was really having a great time. You know, he was, he was Elvis Presley. So no one really knew till right at the end when he began to change, we knew something was going on. But, you know, it was a part of uh, our society back then. It uh, was. It was very It, it was almost crazy. something that was uh, obligatory. Uh, you, you did it. Uh, you felt like you had to do it. And uh, uh, it's not until now, you know, that we realize that uh, it's to, uh, those decisions you make in that particular area when you're young uh, will probably, you know, in 90 percent of the cases affect the rest of your life. So you've got to be very careful when you're young and, and do the right thing. Well, most of the people I grew up with, they're not here anymore. Well, which yeah. is a really sad thing. That's true. But see, you had courage. You, you stepped away from the business and you took the courage to, you, you told your wife. You know, I, I need to step away or I'm not going to be around. That takes a lot of courage, my friend. A lot of courage. Yeah. Well, I kind of just, uh, it, was a, it was more or less of a, a self-defense thing. I was, uh, I was afraid, and I'd already, I'd already OD'd a number of times and, uh, and just barely uh, made it. You know, the guy, Sonny Curtis with Absolutely. the platters, uh, saved my life. Uh, you know, he, he looked over and he saw, he saw my fingernails turned black and my lips turned black and he, and he knew I was dead, you know. And uh, anyway, somehow I, wa I wasn't. And, but I made it. But I had God a lot of close calls and, and uh, you know, I was just tired of living that way. Well, I'm glad you're back doing your thing. And when we, later in the show, we're going to get him to sing for us. <laughs> it's going to be uh, your acoustic version of Raindrop. Right. right. And drops off a new album. That's right, from the latest CD, and it's fantastic. It's called The Living Room Sessions, so you got to stick around and hear him sing because he, he rocks. Anyway, <laughs> coming up, Everybody Loves Raymond, Phil and Monica Rosenthal are here to talk about why their latest project is changing lives. Very cool. Stay with us. Hello, darling, my, it's good to hear. I'm at the railroad station in St. Paul. How are all the folks I love to see them? But girl, I'd love to see you most of all. Oh my 
my gosh, you sound that's, amazing. That's the great, the great Keb Moe. Ke yeah. Keb Moe, the great blues uh, artist, and uh, you know he's. He's incredible on radio. You know, when we cut this album, one of the first things we said was, "Look, we told the band, we're not doing this for radio. We're doing this because we want to do it, and uh, and because we we love, we love the music. music. And uh, you know, and, and we uh, we certainly want to make make money and sell it or whatever. But uh, Keb Mo, when we sent the thing out, all the radio stations started responding. Well, of course. To Keb Mo. Well, both and, of you. Uh, that duet, and so you know, we said, hey, we're <laughs> Isn't surprised. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so you know, Mr. Hitmaker here, B.J. Thomas, you you have done something. What are you going to sing for us now? I'm going to do "Raindrops Keep Falling." I did that. Uh, <laughs> keep on in my head. You know, you remember that song from uh, Spider-Man 2? Spider-Man 2? <laughs> Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Which every, every time my grandkids come over, I show them Spider-Man 2 so they can hear their pop-off <laughs> and, uh, I did that uh, with uh, Burt Backrack and Hal David. And oh, I had yes, a lot the of, best. A lot of conversations with Hal about that song, and, and that I think that was his favorite song. Well, you know what? Was. And I don't know if you know this, but his song, Raindrops Keep Falling My Head, it was the first uh, out of context song ever put into a movie for Butch Cassidy Sundance Kid. And uh, well, it's pretty cool. and David, they, they started that whole movie song thing. And Bob didn't want it to have Redford. Well, Mr. Redford, uh, you know, he didn't, he, he wasn't, he said, you're not putting that, that song in my art film, you know, because they were, ma they, they were making a... Oh, did he film. make a mistake? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, so, you know, I had no idea it was a. You know, I film, sang but... that song in Japan with my Do brothers because we needed a song that they would know internationally because yeah, yeah. of the language barrier. But, so, yeah, we're, we're, I've been to Japan a number of times. And, they love yeah. that song there. Tell, yeah. them, tell them really quick about John Wayne. Well, we were at the Academy Awards, which was probably the greatest time I ever had, uh, even though in music you have a lot of great times. But uh, after, at the after party, I'm sitting with the. It's because of the raindrops keep falling on your head. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I sang it and it won the Academy Award. And um, uh, we were sitting with Bert and Angie, right? And uh, Angie uh, Dennis Hopper. Mm -hmm. So we had a we had a pretty wild table going for ourselves. That's when they were married, right? Bert and Angie. Yeah, Bert yeah, and Angie. Bert and that's around. one of the first reasons I had to really I so respect and love him. But the first reason was that hey, he's married to Angie, Angie Dickinson. Dickinson. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, well, it could be bad. Exactly. So we, we walked beautiful. around and we came over and, and John Wayne was over. And he said, man, we've got to see John Wayne. So we go over and it's me and Steve Tyrell and, uh, and Dennis Hopper. And we're standing there watching John Wayne. I think Glory was with me. And he's eating some sherbet. And the, 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 camera, the paparazzi, I guess you call them, but this group of photographers came over. And he said, if you take my picture while I'm eating this sherbet, he said, I'm going to blankety blank your blankety blank. You know? <laughs> And so he, he takes his time and he eats it. And so they stopped, you know. And that was the kind of day it was. So they, he eats the sherbet and then he says, okay, you blankety blanks, you can take my blanket. He pulled the whiskey back over. You can take my blankety blank picture, you know. So, he was t so tall. He was so tall. Oh cool, my gosh, man. you guys, I got to work with him too. It was unbelievable. Yeah, he was. Uh, that, that, what a great memory. I him, yeah, yeah, you love him. I know you do. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, you're going to sing the song now, and it is, uh, it's on your new CD, The Living Room Sessions. Uh, here is the best, B.J. Thomas. <laughs> seems to fit those raindrops are falling on my head and they keep falling so I just did and he some talking to the sun and I said I didn't like the way he got things done He's sleeping on the job and those raindrops are falling on my head and they keep falling but they They sin to meet me, won't defeat me. It won't be long till happiness steps up to greet me. Raindrops keep falling on my head, but that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red. Cry is not for me. Stop the rain by complaining Because I'm free Nothing's 
today, Phil and Monica Rosenthal, uh, Laura Nativo, and of course, BJ Thomas. Uh, his new CD, The Living Room Sessions, you gotta get it. It's now available where, BJ? Uh, BJThomas.com, iTunes, anywhere you can buy records. You got it. And also, where do we go to find out where you're touring, where your dates uh, are? BJ.com, and my, my schedule will be there. Okay, perfect. For more information, too, you can go to our website. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Yeah.